Welcome back to Brutamode EX Plus. Today we make a start on the secret page of Brutamode EX Plus, which is hidden away by right-clicking the third page. This allows us to access 39 more extremely difficult levels, all with their own unique gimmick to keep things fresh, with most of these levels intended to be the hardest levels in the game. So without further ado, let's start with the first level of page 4. It translates literally into the Art of Explosion. Now, I don't see any art challenge when I load into the level, so I'm just going to use the Wintermelon Tallnut loadout we all know and love. But pretty soon, we will know what the Art of Explosion is. All plants now expire just 5 seconds after being placed, exploding with a chance to give you some sun. Clearly, Wintermelons are useless since they unalive themselves, so we already have to restart. Welcome to the dumb strategy, Edition probably 10 at this point, where some producers are not even relevant anymore. It's just using puff shrooms and imitator puff shrooms exploding will give us enough sun to spend throughout the level. On top of that, puff shrooms are now pretty effective early game defenders since their on death explosions are enough to instantly kill basic zombies. Just puff shroom is not enough against bucketheads, so I'll be spending squash and potato mine on higher health foes to take them out. And of course, doom shroom is being used because why would I not use it? Doomshroom will certainly be the main source of damage for us when no attackers can stay on the lawn for long. Grave Buster will be necessary to deal with gravestones spawned by pole vaulters if they jump early, and it also gives us some extra sun to work with. Unsurprisingly, the challenge is with the second half of the level, because there are ladder zombies who cannot be slowed down easily and also withstand explosions from puff shroom deaths. This means that we have to keep using a bunch of blowers and ice shrooms to slow down the zombies until our Doomshroom can come back from cooldown. Easier said than done, because we only have a very limited amount of sun to spend blowers, as our only method of replenishing sun is to keep planting more puff shrooms. Towards the end of the second flag, we essentially have no sun to work with anymore because so much of it was being spent on blowers and ice shrooms alike to keep the zombies at bay. But, thankfully this level was a short one, so it was already the final wave, letting our lawnmowers clean up for us. Pretty easy first level, so let's see what's next in store for us. The next level is Solar Storm. Well, Solar Storm is certainly an odd name because in this level... Hello there. So, with no sunflowers, we can only get sun from... Welcome to Sun Bombs in PvZ1. This is equivalent to the minigame from Far Future in PvZ2, where sun can only be collected when fully descended, and explode if collected early. To compensate for not being able to have sunflowers, each sun is now worth double, and the rate at which sun falls from the sky is noticeably much faster. My plan is to simply use the dumb strategy again. With a limited amount of sun, Doomstream spam alongside a plethora of stallers will be the most efficient way of killing off all the zombies. I'm also finally able to use Snow Pea, thanks to the level being in daytime. A bit of passive damage and stalling to recharge Doomstream will hopefully slow down pole vaulters. Emphasis on hopefully. So, redoing this promptly, this time I am using Winter Melon because Snow Pea is clearly not useful to helping us do particularly anything. I also have brought in Cactus as our method of detecting balloon zombies. On top of that, we also get their pretty decent damage which is equivalent to a vanilla repeater. We can use our Sun Bombs to deal just a bit of extra damage to Bucketheads occasionally to get the extra damage we need to kill them off when using Cactus. All of this sets up really nicely to defend off the early game relatively reliably. Unfortunately, we're still quite struggling to get past even just two winter melons with the very few sun we get. And this time, I actually used Tolna to block pole vaulters. Or at least I thought I did. Well, this time I am not messing with pole vaulters again, so I'm actually going to use my Tolna early on as our defense so I don't mess up again. Hopefully. Going for tall nuts in the early game also helps us set up extremely good blockades against football zombies and bungee ambushes, providing a much needed line of support. Well, not necessarily a line just yet because we only have 3 tall nuts right now and still need to plant 2 more to fully block off pole vaulters. <laughs> so, this time, I actually changed my strategy. Since Tolna is recharging too slowly in the early game and Cactus does too little damage, we're going to use Melon Pulse DPS instead. With a plan turn to double their DPS, this is now certainly enough to not lose against them again. I think. I've stopped trying to use Cactus in the early game because unfortunately it just doesn't do enough damage for it to be worth buying outside of popping balloons. This time, with some actual defense, we're able to make it to the first flag relatively easily thanks to the much better DPS we now have from using Plantern with Melon Pulse. 
We breezed past the first flag without many issues thanks to how good Melon Pulse damage is. That is, not many issues until a Jack in the Box exploded right between our lineup. We get set back in our progress of starting to upgrade to Winter Melons. Repairing the wall will be a lengthy process and it doesn't look particularly well now our Gargantuar is coming in. Thankfully, this extremely good Cherry Bomb single-handedly brings us back into the game by eliminating almost the entirety of the wave by itself. But, this is still not one yet. We still need to plant Cactus in all 5 rows and are still pretty far off from getting a Winter Melon, so things can go south if we get unlucky Balloon Spawns. Thankfully, all the Balloon Zombies in the second flag go into lanes where we already have Cactus, so I was finally able to get our first Winter Melon to secure the top half. This Winter Melon is so good at defending, it was basically the only Winter Melon we needed for the remaining half of the level, as instant kills are simply enough to defend the bottom half. This defense is actually just good enough to carry us all the way to the final wave, where we can simply use another Doom Shroom to one shot, and that's Solar Storm completed. The next level is Don't Play in the Water. Pretty sure we all know what this level is going to be doing. Oh no! This level is basically unsodded in pool if you think about it. We have to defend 6 rows with only 4 rows of planting space. Thankfully, this level isn't nearly as difficult as unsodded because it is only a 2 flag level as opposed to being 4 flags, so we won't need nearly as much damage. It's also not as hard because we already know what the best strategy for unsodded is, after 10 hours of experimentation, which is the free Peter Starford combo. I begin the level by building up an extremely strong economy by sacrificing lawnmowers, and this allows us to mass up a ton of sun early on to very fast start planting on free Peters straight away. We also get a whole extra lane to plant sunflowers, which is another reason why this level is much easier compared to Unsodded. Just look at how much we have by the first flag. The only really big challenge in this compared to Unsodded is Ladder Zombies. Ladder Zombies can invalidate our Tall Nuts and are also extremely tough to deal with using straight projectiles. Fortunately, we can actually still defend them off quite well by using pumpkins to slow them down thanks to our large stockpile of sun available, so it wasn't even a big deal anyway. Unfortunately, target zombies are still a pain to deal with. With a wide variety of threats going into the water lanes, things like this can happen. Not only can we not stop newspaper zombies in the water, but this next bungee ambush is just bringing back the unsodded saga. Catapult zombies cannot be killed if it has leftover basketballs, making it impossible to defend off an amphibious catapult because, well, we can't make a shoot if we can't plant in front of it. And oh dear me, we literally got Doom Shroom back from cooldown just in time to kill the catapult zombie before we lost the game. This unlock concludes this level in just one attempt, thanks to us already having previous knowledge of what the most effective or rather, the only strategy in Insodded is. The next level translates to Prolonged War. At first glance, there are no restrictions and no special zombies, so what's going on here? So I thought this must be like a 10 flag level or something ridiculous like that, so I went with Winter Melons as we previously saw in Survival Endless how powerful they are. Except the zombies aren't spawning after I planted 3 sunflowers. With extra preparation time, I am a bit confused because this doesn't seem to be a single type spam level, nor is anything really standing out yet. The first zombie is here, and it's just a buckethead. Still nothing special yet. Alright, I guess, I'll just keep planting some flowers. Yes, the gimmick of this level is that the level constantly switches between daytime and nighttime. In nighttime, all non-mushroom plants will fall asleep and vice versa for daytime. The major problem here is that our sunflowers sleep at nighttime, which I'm not sure why I didn't just plant new sunflowers instead of using coffee bean when it costs less. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of that when initially playing here. It, it, it was such a skill issue moment, okay? <laughs> Running it back, this time we're utilizing Puff Shroom in tandem since they wake up once it turns night, making it a very useful early game plan. However, reliability is a huge issue. Sure, it defends for free during nighttime, but once it's daytime, my Puff Shrooms just become useless once again, so I lose all my defense immediately. There is little I can do about that, so if I'm going to rely on Mushroom Attackers, it will need to be something else that's going to work in both daytime and nighttime. The plan is we're going to use Tallness as our early game defense, since sleeping Tallness will keep their passive ability to do damage when eaten. Unfortunately, they can't heal while sleeping. However, the main problem is having no sun production at nighttime. As sleep sunflowers don't contribute to our economy, and the delay zombie spawns are not enough compensation. We're going to need something better than just puff shrooms because they aren't nearly enough to hold off the zombies for very long. This is why in my next run, I'm mixing in sun shrooms and planting them alongside my sunflowers even in daytime, without waking them up. 
Doing so sets us up for our nighttime economy. Sun streams are also more efficient than sunflowers when active, so it's a great long-term investment when we have nothing to do early. But the problem is now, how do we even find space to plant both sunflowers and sunshrooms? We have to spend 4 columns on sun producers. There's no way to fit in anything else. So I very quickly realized in this run, that my way of beating this would not be to use any offensive plants that are sleeping half the time. There's only one solution to this. The only valid solution to this is to bring back the dump strategy. The strategy where we mainly rely on garlic to divert zombies early on to spam doom shroom later to kill everything. Not only does this offer us enough space comfortably to plant some production, but instant kills are less effective by a day-night cycle since they aren't being carried across phases anyways. Garlic also still diverts zombies while asleep, making it the only plant that is completely unaffected by the day-night cycle. Maybe flower pot as well, but that's irrelevant. Kind of sad, the only way to beat this is to completely avoid the day-night cycle mechanic with instant kills, but I guess that's the point of the level. It also looks like sun shrimps ungrow themselves when it is changed to day, but that's simply a visual glitch. Otherwise, this is just a standard dumb strategy game plan here. Just having two doom shrooms and sufficient sun to keep planting them while planting stallers is pretty much a guaranteed win. Even gargantuars are not big of a problem anyways, because this level is just two flags. So they literally only show up in one wave and they don't really do that much to affect the outcome. But that's about how to beat like almost every level in Bruno Modi X Plus if there's a special gimmick that affects attacking plants. But before I show you a completely ridiculous level, we have one more easy level to get through. This next level is visually impaired, and I'm pretty sure you can already see why so. The layers of the asset are completely messed up in this level, with the sun being more difficult to see, but that's the only thing different about it, so it's pretty easy to beat with just Winter Melon strategy. It's pretty much just an easy version of Invisigool, and my suggestion is if you can't see the sun, then you should just spam click around the whole board to collect the sun. It's kind of like brute forcing the guild matches. You're bound to be able to randomly click on a sun when you try every single possible place on the board. Otherwise, your visual impairment will get worse over time as the level goes on, as the sun will become more and more transparent, and the screen will flash in different colors. This makes it increasingly harder to collect, but as I said, just brute forcing the sun collection will make this visual impairment completely irrelevant. So, time for the worst level in today's video. Now, in this next level, oh boy, Go With The Flow is one of the most difficult levels in the entirety of Bruno Modi X+. And you'll see why I say so when you see what the name means. Now of course, I brought back the classic Winter Melon strategy, and I'll be using Tall Nuts and Cattails to defend the early game, starting with this Tall Nut to block off the basic zombie. Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, you saw that correctly. Every single zombie now no longer eats and instead pushes your plants backwards like the PvZ2 Punk Zombie. If there's no space, the plant dies immediately. Obviously, we can't use tall nuts in this level because, well, it can't be eaten anyways. So, after I restarted, I thought about what I could use in this level instead, but wait. How are we even going to kill snorkel zombies if they remain invulnerable the entire time since they only push and won't ever come out of the water to eat? Hold on, and we can't even block newspaper zombies! Well, folks, this is why this level is going to take 7 hours to beat. And no, I'm not kidding. 7 hours on just this one level alone. Prepare for the upcoming monstrosity. I first tried Colonel Pult to try and stop the newspaper zombies, but oh dear me, Colonel Pult sucks so much because it does like no damage at all. The only way to go about this is to hope newspaper zombies don't come too much, because practically almost every plant in the game activates the newspaper zombies rage mode. For instance, I can't even use Cattail here because, well, you can see for yourself. There's literally nothing that can stop the newspaper zombie. You can't block it, you can't use Melon Pulse because that breaks the newspaper, and Colonel Pulse sucks. Dear God. Colonel Pulse are too slow at doing damage. Melon Pulse don't work, so it's time to use Chomper. I mean, Chompers sure do prevent newspaper zombies from raging. Unfortunately, even with the buffs they've received, it's still not fast enough for a Chomper to have a chance to kill two newspaper zombies before it's just completely deleted by a zombie. However, it does seem to work better than Colonel Pulp because we get to control where we kill that newspaper zombie, and we get to make it to the first flag finally by using Chompers. Then comes the next problem in this level. Yup, as we expected earlier, since Norco zombies just need to stop for one frame to push a plant, there's literally no way to even stop them without instance. It doesn't look like Colonel Pulse are even close to effective enough for them since they move so fast in Bruno Modi X+. 
instance can solve them for now, but this level is a free flag level. So this is going to be even more ridiculous later when the stupidity continues. On top of contending with newspapers and snorkels that cannot be blocked, we also have Bucketheads to deal with in this level, whose bungee ambushes are unpredictable as well. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad, so I can just keep using more blowvers to tell up problematic lanes while we farm up sun to plant more chompers. That is, until... Using too many blowvers will wear down newspapers' health, so we can't even infinitely stall newspapers. Oh yeah, you thought we survived, but not that fast. If we can't stall newspaper zombies for long enough with blowvers, I mean, I might as well try spike weed and spike rocks, right? They will handle the high density of newspapers, I think. Yeah, the problem is pretty clear. If we don't use Chopper, we just immediately die early game because newspapers can't be set on wave 1 and there's literally nothing else that can deal with them. Even with an extremely good start with triple bucket heads, the amount of sun does not help us defend any newspaper zombies. Okay, and this next strategy, I want to see if Starford could always attack in front of itself since it's always getting pushed back. Unfortunately, their target gaining is horrible, so it just gets pushed back and never shoots even though it can hit the zombie in front of it. They also suck against newspaper zombies, but I suppose that's a given because we're using a straight shooting plan. We're back to using chompers again, but this time with Ice Shroom as support to hopefully give us some more time to let our chompers finish following. Surprisingly though, just chompers alone are able to beat the entire early game on their own thanks to the low density of zombies early in the level. Before the first light came, I went for a cop cannon which will be pretty good in this level because we can control where and what it hits to avoid hitting newspaper zombies. Well, it went really well for us until I had a little bit of a skill issue. You see, I threw by using a squash on top of a newspaper zombie last time, so on my next run I make sure to not do that again. But oh boy, this is even worse than what just happened. Alright, so I'm going to stop using Squash this time, and I'm just going to use Blover for more stalling after the last two attempts, which were absolutely horrible, to say the least. The early game was extremely easy with Chompers, always going well up until the first flag, with our only lawnmower lost so far was just a letterhead and looked like we were on track to win. Using Blover was an excellent choice because it allowed for newspaper manipulation to stop them from getting hit by our cop cannons or instant kills, giving us maximum control. We made it to the second flag with pretty good control over everything using Blover. Well, that is until I forgot to manipulate the newspaper zombie in one cop cannon shot, and well... This strategy isn't just something that could survive the early game guaranteed either. When too many small zombies instead of bucketheads show up like in this run, it's not feasible to defend. And if you want to know how we lose here, well... The next problem we have are dancing coneheads. The backup dancers they spawn are just awful for our chompers. A lot of the time, they can just demolish several chompers instantly. However, I find out in my next run that using a bunch of ice streams in the early game is the key to staying alive with a huge army of sunflowers in the back. I managed to afford my third cop cannon soon after and we were on pace to beat this level if I make no mistakes of lawnmowers gone from most lanes now. And here it comes, the first natural gargantuars. However, we have to deal with the massive amounts of newspaper zombies in the second lane first by the looks of it. Also, one minor detail I forgot about the Gorgantuar's ability. Not only do Gorgantuars have tremendous amounts of health to block our chompers from cleaning up newspaper zombies, their imps are also devastating to our defense. These imps can simply instantly kill whatever they land on, and this creates even more problems for us because if the imp lands on an expensive plant, we might as well restart. Additionally, the amount of zombies by the second flag is just way too much for choppers to deal with, and it's just no longer viable to manipulate zombie positions. There doesn't seem to be a good solution to all the problems all at once. Newspapers, snorkels, and gargantuars. What can we even do in this level that's going to be everything? As the attempts go by, my experiments get wilder and wilder. I even try using Split Peak consistently, one of the worst plants in this mod to try to do damage because I'm just out of ideas. It really just doesn't quite do enough damage for what it's worth. Now I'm cooking, using Twin Sunflower to ramp to a cop cannon as fast as possible, without even bringing Chomper this time, and well, it ends well. 
I didn't try using Twin Sunflower instead of Blover in the Chomper double stalls loadout to try and make more sun instead of just stalling the zombies out for more cob cannons. But the funny thing I learned here wasn't Twin Sunflower being good or not, but rather one of the most important game mechanics in Brutomo DX Plus that I hadn't encountered up until now. As I said in the last part of Runa Modi X Plus, target zombies that are killed with a disintegrating instant kill while frozen by Ice Shroom don't spawn in Bungie Ambush. But you see, this isn't quite relevant because the next wave immediately sent two more target zombies of course, and I literally just used my Ice Shroom the wave previous. It's pretty unlucky that happened, and next run there were no issues with variants, and the sun inflow is actually accelerating much faster now with Twin Sunflower. Unfortunately, when we do have enough sun to afford more expensive plants, getting more than just two cock cannons isn't necessarily going to win because the problem is really just with the newspaper zombies hiding behind other hordes of zombies. There's just no way to separate them reliably to not hit them with our instant kills. On my next run, I decided to do a better job at protecting my cock cannons, so I put them all the way in the back and put my twin stone flowers in the third column. The run was pretty good until I didn't notice a lone dancing conehead in the middle row, which walked right into my cock cannon and I knew I lost for sure when I pushed my cop cannon. So the time for more cooking has arrived. If four cop cannons can't beat this level, then it's time to bring out the spike weeds. Again? Not sure what I was thinking about doing here. Spike weeds with Cabbage Pult, Chomper, and Marigold. If this isn't a strategy from Ohio, I don't know what is. Then, I actually decided to try only using Cabbage Pult as our attacking plant and using as much support as possible to let them output as much damage as I can. Now, yes, it sounds dumb. Why would I use Cabbage Bolt, a plant that does as much damage as Pea Shooter? Well, hear me out. They don't actively newspaper zombies and also target Snorkel zombies. Plus, we don't lose that much if an imp ever lands on top of a Cabbage Bolt because it's cheap. They're also one of the most cost-efficient attackers because similar to Pea Shooters, every lob of cabbage makes a shoot faster by 1%, up to 50% faster. It's usually not used due to how space inefficient it is, but we're using it here thanks to its properties of being able to counter both snorkels and newspapers at the same time. The early game is actually very good, since Cabbage Pult spam with Flanter does in fact actually do quite well against Bucketheads if supported with slowing plants like Blover. And oh my goodness, I don't know where Cabbage Pult has been my entire life as they completely melt through the waves extremely quickly. There's literally nothing that can make newspapers activate into rage mode unless we plant too many blovers. And it doesn't seem to be a problem yet, as Ice Shrooms is good enough to stall. Very quickly, we melt through these waves like butter and Gorgantrars don't even make it that far in before they get wiped off the face of the lawn. With this second flag coming in already on the first try of using this strategy, this is certainly promising. Out of everything, somehow Cabbage Pult is the best plant in this level. However, I end up using too many blovers, which angers a newspaper zombie and that literally made me panic so much I panic dropped the jalapeno, which angers two more newspaper zombies. Pretty annoyingly, cabbage pults cannot stop newspaper zombies while they are enraged similar to other catapults since newspapers move too fast and we took a pretty big hit here. However, even when faced with hardship, we are able to reach the final wave, but look at how much sun I have. I barely have any to spare to use to stall out the strongest wave in the level. I use a jalapeno here in lane 2 because one cabbage pole cannot stop an imp. With that, that's the game wave. It was so close! The final wave in play and the only thing separating us from winning and losing are the few lawnmowers that we lost to some mistakes early on. However, what I didn't know was just simply how difficult the final wave would be for us when we were using Cabbage Bolt. Its density is just way too high and even with a combination of support plants, it seems like that using Cabbage Bolt is just not going to be a probable way to deal with the final wave. But I know that Cabbage Bolt is good enough to beat everything up until then, so I just have to not make any mistakes and not lose any lawnmowers to preserve them for the final wave. Easier said than done of course, because on the next attempt, I make it to the final wave again just to lose once again because of us running out of sun precisely here. It's just incredibly frustrating time and time again, the little mistakes that cost like a few sunflowers throughout the entire level stacks up to us just barely not beating the final wave. And mind you, so far I've only spent around 4 hours on attempts. Even with the right strategy that I've found for this level, I still continue to struggle for hours on end to try and beat this level. Like, sure, we can reliably get to the final wave, but that doesn't really mean anything since perma-stalling the Gorgantros don't mean anything if we can't kill them at the end of the level. We simply need to find a way to kill the zombies faster because right now, we're just stalling too much so much so that we find ourselves in a really tough spot in the final wave. All of this is still not that bad though. 
in comparison to having to be wary of newspaper zombies because I can get a bit too reckless sometimes against them. Barring the super unlucky runs that cause us to lose early on like to target zombies, I have developed new planter placements to make sure that we can survive later on in the level. This formation of planters evenly spreads out the damage more instead of concentrating cabbage bolts in the top and bottom lanes, while sacrificing damage in the water. And that's fine, because there aren't gargantuars in the water, so we can afford to lose some damage there. These little bits of optimizations really helps us get a bit further than before. It is unfortunate that I use a jalapeno in lane 5 to try and save my lawnmower, only for it to still be used anyways, because there was a newspaper hiding in there. Remember the 125 sun loss, because every little bit of sun matters a ton in this level. This is because after this lawnmower being lost, that's literally the final wave of the level. And that's a W right there. All zombies only spawning in lanes of lawnmowers and pool cleaners. That means we have finally beaten this dreadful level after suffering for hours. Well, at least I thought so. Oh my god. Hell no, man. No. 50 sun off having another jalapeno to beat this level. This is why I said that every sun matters, and something as idiotic as target zombie RNG can ruin the day even with the correct strategy. We're always so close, yet always so far from victory at the end of the day. At this point, I've played this level for 3 streams straight and still haven't beaten it despite already finding the correct strategy. The pure RNG involved in this is just ridiculous. Mind you, that's 6 hours straight of just playing this one level and also 2 hours of just using the same loadout over and over again, reaching the final wave more than 5 times and losing. On day 4 of trying to beat this level again, I had an early mishap with target zombies and also newspaper zombies. But okay, this is just a warm up game here to dip my toes back into the water. 4 streams dedicated to just this one level alone is just so tiring. Especially when you get to the point where you feel like you can do it, but RNG just has to say no and screw you over. The tilt really gets to me by this point, and I'm screwing up even my cherry bomb positioning. It's just a really bad negative feedback loop where more despair causes more tilt. But finally, we get to this run. I make it past the early game with ease by getting plant turns early and avoiding all bungee ambushes by using ice shrooms as well as getting a ton of sunflowers. We also luckily did not see many zombie variants from the first flag up until the second flag with no pumpkin zombies showing up at all. Then, two gargantuas show up in the bottom lane. I had to use two instant kills on them, or else the bottom lane would have certainly been dead, which unfortunately had the side effect of losing another lane instead. But that's fine. We still have time to recover from this from the second flag onwards here, and this is not looking too shabby so far. As you can also see, I'm now also using only two cabbage bolts in the top lane, because gargantuas can't spawn in the first lane in non-survival levels, so I get to cut some costs. I keep using blowvers to keep the zombies at bay, being very careful to not activate newspaper zombies rage mode ever, and this is looking just fine for us here. The bottom lane isn't looking too good again with how many gargantuas piled up, but we just need to stall this until the final wave to use our lawnmower. And of course, I couldn't do that. Now with almost no sign in reserve, it looks like this is going to be another loss in the books for us. But hold on a second, the final wave is coming in already. This is looking like it's actually going to be the run. Now we just need to beat the final wave and be extremely careful to not lose to a newspaper zombie. I thought I couldn't find a level more stupid than Unsodded, but this has to be one of the contenders for the hardest levels in the entire game. Just absolutely astonishing. And that is it. No more mistakes to be made. We finally get it done in the stupid level and we finally beat it after 4 days of straight trying this one level alone and it's over. That's it for the first 6 levels of Brutamodi X plus the secret levels. Next time, we'll be playing more secret levels, and these levels start to get more and more creative with the twists and gimmicks they bring to the table. Remember to subscribe to stay tuned, and thank you to our channel members for supporting the RCC's channel. And for now, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.